Eiffel. London, 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 London. Do you want me to use, can we use this or not? Yeah. Some need us to use it, you sometimes. No, we are about now, yes, use it. <laughs> Sorry to keep everyone waiting, it was the drug testing man, he's not here. You done me. Got me around the neck. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I got it's raided at 10 to 7 <laughs> three days ago. Oh, we've seen that story in the sound today. <laughs> Have you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, right next to Frank Warren, slagging right, now. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, that. beautiful piece that was. What a true Brit he is. Right. Don't work with Frank, don't yeah. work with me. I didn't bring him right here. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> he, only, he only said it was next to it. <laughs> now you had a complex, Pat. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Listen, guys, getting better and better. Great performance, brutal body shot. Third round KO, onwards and upwards, open to the floor please. Carl, is it a bit frustrating to put all the effort into training and then you get an opponent like that who basically is there to survive? Well, <clears throat> no, no, I've got to get my body ready and in condition for whoever's in front of me. Now, whether or not he was there to survive, I mean, if he'd have got any success early on, he'd have, he'd have soon realised or soon thought to himself and got some confidence, oh, I could do this. I, I took that away from him, I took the play away from him straight away. I didn't, I didn't give him a jab. I won't let him land his right hand. I was, I was catching him with some heavy shots and early on the right hand to the body. So you can't say that he's here to survive because if you look at his previous 34 fights, I mean, he's only lost to world champions. So I, I have to prepare as meticulously for, for him as I do for anybody else. It's not frustrating though, it's nice to come out of the ring without any injuries or upset ribs or cuts. He's in the state of Tony Bellew's face tonight. I mean, he's got a good fantastic surgery now, so yeah. it's, it's, it's nice to come out of the ring unscathed. And I think the crowd still appreciated the performance, so it's everyone's yeah. happy all around. Eddie, what's next? Um, Oceana, I think. <laughs> Lee Crutch is sorting some after party, though. I mean, I had a call, I spoke to Jean Bedard last week, uh, Lucian Butte's promoter. I just can't, you know, I can't see them after the Gretchev performance and that performance wanting to take the fight. We're more than willing to go to Montreal, but contractually we're obliged to. If they don't want it now, they're, they're probably going to lose out on the opportunity. So I'm going to give them the opportunity to have the fight in March. We've got the problem of Adonis Stevenson, the mandatory. Uh, he's a good fighter. You know, if we fight Boutte, we'd have to ask for an exception for the IBF and uh, Adonis Stevenson will have to wait. We could fight Adonis Stevenson. We want to fight Kessler. Andre Ward's just, I think the two top things trending at the moment on Twitter are Carl Froch and Andre Ward. He tweeted saying, I quite fancy a trip to the UK. I think, I think he'd come. I really do. And uh, I want to do a stadium fight with Carl Froch, you know, an outdoor fight in the summer. That's what I really want to do. But I also want to get a fight in, in the meantime. I did say to Rob McCracken in the change room about 10 minutes ago, you know, we could get him out in February, you know. He said, no, we cannot. So, <laughs> you know, um, I listen to Rob, I'll, I've got my ideas and he tells me the reality. But I think the reality is Boutte, Stroke, Stevenson, Kessler and Ward for 2013. That, that's really the only fights that particularly interest us. Presumably, Carl, you, you would be ready for a fight pretty soon because, you know, you've come out so unscathed tonight. Yeah, there's no injuries, so potentially yes, um, but it's, it's whether or not we could, could do it. I mean, I'd have to get straight back on, because I always need to try, I mean, we'll have a week off now, because um, my body's now at the, at the peak, so I need to have a, a week off or, or, or maybe two weeks off, and then you've sort of got to start again. Fitness is a funny thing physically, but I could be ready for as early as next year, you know, late February, March, April, we're just, it's realistically opponent-wise and they knew what, what would do. I mean, but I'm I'm happy. I mean, I'm at the stage of my career now where I don't I haven't got time to waste. I'm not going to do anything stupid like like jump in too early. But I think I'd be ready to be honest. I feel like I say I've got no injuries. It was quite a straightforward job tonight for me. Uh, my hands are fine. Uh, Rob does a fantastic job wrapping my hands anyway. So I'd, I've very really damaged my hands now. Um, <coughs> so, no, I feel good, and if, if something could come off quite sooner rather than later, then I'd, I'd prefer that, to be honest. You said you thought it would be a knockout tonight, but are you surprised, third round? I was surprised it came a little bit earlier than what I thought it would. Um, but, having said that, I was landing some heavy shots earlier. He stayed in range, and I backed him up. 
he didn't move as much as I thought he would. So if he's going to sit in front of me and, and take them kind of shots, then not many people can take them, especially around the body as well. Do you think he lost a bit of his strength dropping down the weight? He, he, he did seem a bit, a bit slow to react. Potentially, but he's not a massive light heavyweight. I mean, he's boxed previously at Super Middle, it was a few years ago. But he's not like a Chad Dawson or even if you look at Tony Bellew tonight, the six foot two, six foot three, big. He's got big shoulders, um, Yusuf, mate. But I don't think he's, he's a massive light heavyweight anyway. So he may still comp campaign at, at Super Middle going forward. But no, I didn't think he was absolutely dead at the weight. I, I didn't because he didn't go up high. We weighed him this morning um, and he was only 12 stone six. If, if they took loads and loads of weight off, he'd come straight back on. And he, he, he had his breakfast and then he weighed in. So it was similar weights going in the ring. So I don't think that did anything. I think the body shots and the, the strong punches and my timing and accuracy and you know the 12 weeks training I put in to get to the position where I'm in brings a result. If I didn't do the training then um, I could have made hard work of him tonight. Made well, it easier. One thing I said this to Rob afterwards that I've noticed in your last two fights is you seem to have, you, you've got the knack now of knowing exactly when to go for the kill. You know. You, you spot it and you go for it now. Do you think that's something that you've, you've, you've cracked in the last year or so? I think so. It's experience. It builds up over years. Um, if I'd have boxed him in my pro debut or in my 10th fight, you know, probably would have got beaten. That's, that's boxing. But, you know, at this stage of my career, I know I can read a fight very well. I back to my corner, listen to Rob, and I do what I need to do. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very experienced. I've had 30, 32 fights now as a professional, 100 amateur fights. If somebody in front of me, I can look in their eyes and I can read the body language and I know what they're doing. So, yeah, that's, that comes. Did you, uh, did you ask him, did you mention afterwards, Carl, about the fake Calzaghi thing that seemed to... Uh, no, I didn't mention it. No, 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 I didn't mention it. <laughs> you didn't think that was... Uh, alone, no. Was he all right? Was he gracious in your feet? Was yeah, he was fine. He was fine. Carl, we've got used to you um, fighting the toughest people out there and you saying you want to fight the toughest people out there, but I'd like to ask you... Um, on a satisfaction level of one to ten, where do you feel after tonight? Satisfactory wise, I mean, I've done a twelve week camp, and it's been very, very difficult. And I'm, I'm a big believer that the fight is won or lost before you step through the ropes. And I lost the fight with Andre Ward before I stepped through the ropes because mentally I wasn't switched on, physically I was drained. Um, as, as in Manhattan, sitting in New York again for the second time right before Christmas. Um, we, was, we was actually doing okay in New York. We was, I was training hard. Me and Rob was doing what we needed to do. The sparring was quite brutal with Peter Quillen, Kid Chocolate. He's now a world champion. And I was angry and I was focused and I was on. I was on the case. Then we moved over to Atlantic City, and it was the same old same one. I was, I was there in June fighting Johnson, and it was like Groundhog Day. And you know, Rachel came out of my my um, um, my family and my mum, and I was thinking about getting back to Rocco, my little boy, for Christmas. And the last three or four days in Atlantic City, I just switched off. Rob knew I'd switched off. He'd give me a ball of kid. He knew it was all, you know, I wasn't on the, on the ball. And I lost the fight before I stepped through the ropes. So, you know, that won't happen again. I put that into experience. And every, every, time, every time I fight now, I do a 12-week camp, and I make sure that, that the final hour, it's not the last hour, it's the last week, but come of the hour, come of the man. That's an old saying. And that's what I do. I switch on. I get myself ready mentally at the end. All the physical preparation is done. And mentally, I need to um, I need to make sure I do the right things right before the fight, which which I do now. But that comes with experience again. Eddie, if um, uh, Canada doesn't happen, uh, where's the sort of venue between here and the city ground? Because this is probably an outbreak. Mien O2. I think he's capable yes. of filling those stadiums yeah. with you know with the right opponent and with his profile. I mean, we sold out tonight. Um, nine and a half thousand, great atmosphere. You know, no disrespect to Yusuf Mack, but he's not the star bidding that's going to do twenty thousand seats. Um, you know, outside of Ricky Hatton, I don't see many bigger ticket sellers than, than Carl Froch um, in the UK. So we love Nottingham Arena. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a great stadium, and but we will need to step up with the right opponent. And I'm, I'm confident, you know, and the possibility is to bring him to London to the O2. They're really interested in inviting there, and obviously the MEN. It's just a case of picking the right fight. I mean, if we waited till April, May, that brings the stadium into play. And obviously, Kessler's got McGee on December the 8th. That's something we're really interested in. I just can't see many people wanting to come to Nottingham to fight Carl Froch. But if we're pay-per-view on Sky, and that's what it has to be to bring these names over, 
then we can definitely create the revenue to make them come. And I believe Andre Ward will come because I think he'll fancy the fight and I think he'll think he can win. Um, and I think we'll get Ward over quicker than we'll get Kesler potentially. Carl, how much would you enjoy outside the city ground summer fight like that? I think other than fighting here, at this arena, the, the next best thing for me would be at the uh, Nottingham Forest City ground. It'd be just unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's outdoors, so you don't get the same sort of atmosphere where the noise is bouncing off the ceiling. You've got 35, 40,000 fans, you've got the tiered seats, and then you've got the pitch. So, I mean, I'm, I go to loads of Forest games, and the atmosphere is brilliant. I go on the pitch and you know, stand in ovation, I get received very well there. And to be in the middle of there fighting against somebody, somebody like Kessler or Ward. I can only just imagine what it's going to be like. It, it, it'd just be phenomenal. It'd be great, and for me, it'd be like a career-defining fight. I'd rather do that than go to Las Vegas and you know um, get all the, the lights and the glitz. I'd rather be here in Nottingham, Nottingham City, and that'd just be that'd be the one. So Eddie, Eddie's got to get on it. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Have a questions, guys? Yeah, come in, Rob. Yeah, I think um, I think he's, in, he's he's coming into his peak, Carl. I think he's learned. I mean, we all know the Ward story. We don't want to go back over it. He, the bit he missed out was he sulked his way into the fight a little bit and, and through training because of the Atlantic City and the um, the big anti-climax because of the Super 6 final. We thought originally Vegas, Madison Square Garden, we go back to Atlantic City. Uh, so things didn't work out. We had a chat the next morning. He put it right. But I think he's a fantastic fighter. And I think... You know, to sit and watch him, and look, I'm in the corner watching him. He reminds me of watching some of the brilliant fighters when I was younger from the the States and Mexico, and now we've got one of our own that, that can fight at that level. He's pound for pound the best in Britain. He's he's in the top ten pound for pound in the world. So you know, it's it's a brilliant story and a, and a journey that's still going on. And he says, you know, oh, at this stage in my career, but Carl's a young 35, and you know, he, there's not an issue with him. He can fight for another two years or another five it's it's not a problem but he's a he's a physical specimen he lives the life and he's a tremendous fire carl you said uh you're coming on with experience and you're learning how to deal with different situations as you mature do you feel like you could you haven't quite reached your peak yet do you feel like there's more to come you you're all, you're always learning i don't feel like i've not quite reached my peak because i'm 35 years old be ridiculous to say that i think i'm in my peak physically because um, I know from targets and my personal best, sometimes on runs and strength and conditioning, the recovery slows down and the recovery is harder as you get a little bit older. But you can you get your recovery before you fight in boxing, so you have two or three days off as long as you've done the weight right, which I do, and then you can put in the output. You put in a massive performance. I'm, I can do twelve rounds quite comfortably against anybody in the world. You know I've proven that time and time again. Um, but mentally, you get better and better, and you're learning all the time. So I'm 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 in my prime. And primed and ready for, for anybody. I've proved that with the people I've fought. I've not won every single fight every time I step through the ropes, but I don't get outclassed. I don't get spectacularly knocked out like some of our British fighters that think they're superstars. You know, I, I lose close point decisions. <coughs> I like to draw them by the side. I can put that right. And I can put it right against Kessler. And I can put it right against Ward. I know I can. I'm going to have to put in the hard work for 12 weeks. But can I just say before we close that... My beautiful partner Rachel Corden there is four months pregnant and uh, oh. very happy night for me. We have a second child. We don't know if it's going to be a boy or girl, we're going to get a surprise. So, <laughs> anyway, that's that. She's not fat, she's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Alright, guys, we're done. Thanks for coming as always. Thank you.